Hi everybody, my name is Daniel. I'm back with another video. This time we're going to talk about Blue Prism. We're going to take a deep dive. We're going to look at the RPA market, the robotic process automation market, the TAM, total addressable market, its competition. We're going to look at the Blue Prism fundamentals, its plans for growth, and my opinion, whether I'm buying, I'm selling, um, what I think it's going to happen next year. So let's go. RPA market. It might not be obvious to everybody what this market is, but generally currently with big companies, big companies have a lot of repetitive actions and they automate them with this kind of software. And it's very valuable to them. They can spend five to 10,000 pounds on a robot, uh, which can do the job of uh, a, a small team of five, let's say, workers doing things like data entry, repetitive tasks, answering the phone, doing questions to customers. So, and they also work 24 seven and they don't get ill. And generally it's uh, a much more efficient way of doing it. And it then gets the, the humans to go and do some more, uh, more useful stuff that they can actually use their brain for. So, Robots not necessarily taking over the world, they're just taking over all our boring stuff, at least for now. So there's a couple of articles I found. Uh, one on the bottom left is Gartner, both very bullish articles. So on the left side, you've got uh, growth for, of revenue of the total markets are from 1.4 billion up to 1.8 billion over two years. So that's into next year. And an even bigger estimate with the other article, uh, I'm not familiar with Grand View research, but it's one that popped up when I was Googling. By 2027, it could go up to 25 billion. So this is huge. Plenty of growth. Uh, compound, compound annual growth rate of 40%. Um, there's plenty of market to go at. And if we look at what the competition is, so there are only really four big players that I could find. I see Blue Prism is the only UK entry there. Um, the only other public company that we've got proper figures for is uh, Pega. Revenue of nearly a billion. Again, another loss-making company, but around around about ten times the market cap, around about ten times the revenue, um, and four times the employees. So, on that measurement, at least, uh, the valuation looks relatively in check. Then you've got private companies that we can only estimate what their market cap is. I found these from their last capital raise. Uh, I think UiPath was last year, and Automation Anywhere was a couple of years ago. Uh, and they're very big companies. You've got UiPath that seems pretty overvalued by the looks of it. 400 million in revenue, and 10 billion in market cap in terms of, or based on their last revenue raise. So pretty well fixed. It seems to be revenue linked because neither are profit making at the moment. But if you look at the growth, so UiPath over the last few years, fairly static to be honest. Um, they've been making a profit, but it's a stable company. But if you look at Blue Prism's growth, it is, uh, well, currently exponential. I read that their revenue figures, at least for this quarter, on an annualised basis, is at 140 million. So it looks like that exponential curve is continuing. Now you'll see the, the earnings it seems to be a mirror of exponential going down, which is uh, not ideal, but we'll cover that in a minute. And of course, I put a little note there, Microsoft. So Microsoft have released some robotic service, robotic automation service in their Azure offering. It's pretty low end, so it doesn't yet direct compete. So for now, I only see this as a good thing because it expands the market. It brings smaller players into the fold and just increases demand generally. So if people then want a professional solution then they can go to these bigger companies that do it that specialize in this in this offering but look out for that as your and microsoft are adding services left right and center at the moment but what about the fundamentals so income we've got the trailing 12 months we've got 129 million of which 150 million is profit so if you see where they're spending all their money it's all on selling, selling and marketing. They are really aggressively selling this stuff. 
which is incredible. And if you look at the customer growth rate, uh, they've got, well, we've got uh, the halfway through the year in 2019 versus halfway through the year in 2020, gone from 1,337 customers up to 1,864. And the reason I mention this, if you look higher up, we've got recurring revenues, 97%, 98%. That means they're keeping almost every customer that they that they sell to. They're keeping all that revenue, which is incredible. So big selling, big selling efforts, but they're also keeping all the customers. So that's why we see the income curve go exponentially up. But over time we'll see, okay, if the selling continues flat and we see that curve go up, then we should see profitability uh, fairly soon. And on their balance sheet, uh, they have no debt at all. And they've just recently had a hundred million pounds in funding. Um, all based from share equity. So it's looking pretty tidy. So what about their plans? So so from their last annual report, they're looking to break even in 2021. They're pushing more plans into cloud-based products, which makes the adoption from companies much easier. They said directly that in the last three to four months, so during the, um, during the lockdown periods, during the working from home periods, let's say, there's been a huge focus towards cloud-based products. So this allows people to just buy very small robots and it allows big companies to buy them on a grand scale. They don't need any infrastructure, so much better. That brings their cost of entry down. So this is why I'm quite, well, not happy, but uh, Microsoft entering or at least starting to dabble in this area. They will think it will take them a while to build the specialization unless they just flat out buy a company. Again, which we'll talk about later, they, uh, they're really bringing robotic process automation into the mainstream so that it can be brought down into much more low-end applications. Again, the price of robots has come down massively. So if, you, if you're if you in a company of, say, I don't know, 50 to 100 people and you're doing the same thing, even a company that size can then benefit. And that's obviously good for, for the likes of Blue Prism. They're also pushing globally. They've got offices around the world. I think a lot of their sales come in the US at the moment. Uh, still some in UK and Europe, but they're still pushing around the world. So that's the plans. So again, my opinion, basically, can they ex execute their plans? So far, so good. They've had some pretty lofty ambitions. They've done well. They've done everything so far. It's really, for me, it's about the competition. Are they going to get bought out? Uh, who knows? If they do, I think it's generally a good thing for the share price, albeit it slightly truncates the uh, growth. Let's just look at the graph quickly. Massive volatility. I mean, it's all over the place. We're currently in a bit of a dip, which is why at the moment I'm buying. And I have bought this week. I've brought my stake up to uh, about 10% of my portfolio. But it, it does seem like a bit of a, a pump and dump, a bit of a day traders place place to be so it's really up and down like a yo-yo but it's it's trending upwards and until they reach i think what's scaring people off is the is the earnings or lack of earnings i think as long as they get that under control in the next quarterly earnings which i think is the beginning of january yeah it is it's in the middle of january we can see what happens in the middle of january if that earnings starts to uh, stabilize i think uh, there'll be a lot more interest in this and it could shoot up. So that's my opinion. We're in a dip. I'm buying. Uh, it's not advice, but that's a, that's just what I'm doing. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed that. Any more deep dives you'd like to see? Let me know.